This is the veteran Sherman Max. An update to what is likely the most successful electric unicycle ever. And this week, I'm going to review it and tell you what veteran had done to improve on their already successful formula. Despite all of its awesomeness, I'm also going to tell you why I think it has come to represent a lot of things that is wrong with the UC world. Are you ready for the strange tale of the veteran Sherman Max? Roll the intro! Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and help spread the uni gospel! There were a lot of doubt when the veteran Sherman was first launched in the summer of 2020. Can veteran as a brand new company create an electric unicycle that can actually compete with their former employer, Gotway, who up until that point had an exclusive monopoly on high performance 100 volt electric unicycle. But despite the many skeptics, I was a true believer from day one and had this to say at the end of my review for the original Sherman. I find it difficult to convey the sense of joy of riding this wheel and pushing its limit. And it's something you have to experience if you love to ride an EUC. And over the past two years, many, many uni riders have come to share that view and made Sherman one of the best selling electric unicycle ever produced, as well as firmly establishing Veteran as the forerunner in the high performance electric unicycle market and knocking Gotway off of their throne. But for its long awaited refresh, the Veteran Sherman Max, what should have been a victory run, is instead met with renewed questions about Veteran and a much more capable challenger in the form of the 134 volt Big O Master. But before we get into what went wrong, first a shout out to Mr. Sue for letting me his personal Sherman Max for review. As you can tell, this is a wheel that had been mod and ridden hard, but what mattered to us is what it's inside. The Sherman Max now carries a 3600 watt hour battery pack, upgraded from the already respectable 3200 watt hour original, and more importantly, an upgraded 2800 watt motor with a 20% bump in torque. And just like its predecessor, it's promptly sold out. And now once again, I'm back order. Such is the life of an EUC enthusiast. This is fine. On to the review. As usual, I would rate this wheel based on five criteria. Convenience, design, performance, ride quality, and finally value on a scale of one to five. Because of the seismic changes the electric unicycle market has saw over the past two years, I have to really evaluate it in a whole new different light. No wheel exists in a vacuum and all metrics are a matter of relative comparison with what else is available. Starting with convenience, we have for the most part pretty much the same story as the original, which is both good and bad. Many of the features such as the well-balanced trolley handle, the convenient LCD panel, and tubular framing perfect for mounting things like lights or additional protections remain a strong point. The missing cutoff switch, what should have been an easy add remain missing and an annoyance whenever you need to carry this already very heavy wheel. But what emerged as Sherman Max's strongest point when it comes to convenience actually has nothing to do with veteran at all. Over the past two years, partly due to its popularity and the modular nature of how veteran design this wheel, an absolute cornucopia of aftermarket accessory options had emerged to outfit any Sherman in basically whatever configuration you may like to best fit your own purpose. The Max I'm riding currently actually have its headlight replaced with one taken from a Surround e-bike. It's actually surprising how well this thing worked because it really make the factory one look like a cheapo 25 cents flashlight by comparison. Makes me wonder why most other electric unicycle headlights suck so much. It is missing a tail light, but I guess that will have to be a future project. Custom pedal, new tire, and pads have of course all been fitted. Some I swap in just for my own acclimation. 
but this is actually one of the more sparingly modified Sherman I have seen with most others so heavily modest so as to be barely recognizable. Factoring in endless amount of customization options, I'll give it a 4 out of 5 for convenience. With its 86 pound weight, the only major drawback. Let's talk about design and the raw industrial look pretty much remained the same and here we have the beginning of my complaint about what had happened to veterans. In some way the Sherman Max exists as a monument to their inability to create a convincing follow-up to their initial spectacular rise. The 22 inch Abrams which was meant to be their follow-up had been plagued by rendon cutout at the demo stage and six months later we still have not seen any convincing solution from veteran just yet and taking a step back to look at the larger electric unicycle market most other EUC company had embraced the trend to develop suspension models with Bego having gone through four iterations and King Song 2 inside of the last two years and by the enthusiastic reception to those wheels it does appear that the risk taken have paid off and suspension are not only here to stay but is now a critical part of the next generation of high performance electric unicycle. The world have moved on while the veteran Sherman basically remained the same and so I'm a little bit conflicted on how I should rate the Sherman Max. I mean even Apple know that an iPhone with design refresh is required after two years so for their inability to move past their original design and find a new direction, the Sherman Max gets a 2.5 out of 5 for lack of innovation and just plain old being lazy. But who cares about any of these fluffy stuff? The only thing that matters with this wheel is of course performance. This is after all a wheel that is designed for those of us who insist on living on the very edge of the electric unicycle speed envelope. that you'll be surprised for me to tell you that it's still very much deliver all of that and a wee bit more. The Achilles heel of the original Sherman had been its lesser torque at speed below 25 miles per hour and here's where the larger motor and 20% torque increase directly contribute to the bottom line. The Sherman Max accelerate from zero up to its maximum speed at 45 miles per hour in shockingly little time and is in general more responsive and eager in both acceleration and braking and although I have not done a range test, I have no doubt that the additional battery capacity would further contribute to what was already a very impressive range. So the veteran Sherman Max is an improvement on what was already a brilliant combination of engineering and performance, except that unfortunately what was considered to be the limit has also changed significantly over the past two years. Both King Sound and Bego have pushed beyond the prior 100 volt limitation in search of ever greater performances, with Emotion very likely to throw down the gauntlet with their V13 in the near future. The 100 volt Sherman, although still very much a very impressive wheel to ride, now feel like an aging king desperately clinging on to past glory. Now instead of saying wow when I hit 45 miles per hour, I couldn't help but think hmm, is, is that it? And yes, none of those wheels are technically available for purchase just yet and many people are still going through pre-order hell. However, it's clear I think that 
the wind of change is blowing hard and having ridden a 134 volt master and experienced what is possible with higher voltage first hand with the max voltage warning speed of that wheel a full 10 miles per hour faster than the Sherman and that is just with the high torque motor. I have no choice but to be somewhat skeptical of the Sherman Max. Yes, it is a brilliant high speed wheel made better and remain one of the faster electric unicycle you can buy, but difference between faster and the fastest is huge. No one pays top dollar for second best and the Sherman Max gets taken down a peg and gets a four out of five for performance. But when it comes to the question of ride feel, that is a lot easier to answer since it is only depending on your answer to a single question and that is suspension or not. If you're one of the remaining holdout of the anti-suspension clan, then the veteran Sherman Max remain the best electric unicycle you can buy, period. It is stable, nimble, and immensely thrilling to ride and the increased torque fill in some of the hollowness you felt with the original Sherman at lower speed. Even comparing to the veteran Commander, which share very similar specification, the Sherman Max still come out on top. This is peak 100 volt 20 inch solid axle electric unicycle and there is likely will never be another wheel that will beat it at its own game. However, if your answer to that question is maybe, which is understandable since neither of the high performance alternative, i.e. the Big Go Master or the Kingston S20 are widely available and each somewhat questionable for their own reason. But as someone who is lucky enough to have ride tie on both, there are no doubt in my mind that they're the future of the electric unicycle and as great and exciting as it is to ride the veteran Sherman Max, measure against one of these other wheels, it comes up short and gets a 4 out of 5 for ride feel. And finally, let's talk about value. The veteran Sherman Max is $3,800, one of the most expensive electric unicycle you can buy right now. Yet from a certain perspective, I would say that price does make sense. Here we have the latest and improved version of what was the hottest wheel of last generation. One that likely have created an entire crop of brand new hardcore EV riders. And if there is one electric unicycle that can be called legendary, this is it. But it's hard to put a valuation on name recognition alone. Funny that I say that since we're basically at the nexus of the place built by name recognition. But at the end of the day, all that matter when you actually ride the wheel is how it performs. And although yes, the Sherman Max remain a thrilling ride in a wee bit more than even just that, it isn't improved so much where it would make sense for an existing Sherman owner to want to upgrade. Yes, the additional torque and acceleration is nice, so are the longer range, but not sufficiently differentiated so as to warrant a new expensive purchase. And for someone who is moving up from a lower speed wheel, there just seem to be more exciting options for less money. Two years ago, the high performance electric unicycle market had been stagnating with the Go being the only manufacturer of 100 volt wheels, which they keep pumping out year after year without making much changes with the same set of problems that we just keep complaining about. And when Veteran introduced the Sherman, it completely changed the GAN and started at an arm race and now we have three of their competitors all vying for the top spot on the performance wheel with suspension so a slightly faster Sherman just won't cut it no more and as a result it gets a 4 out of 5 for value and with that score very likely to drop quickly in the near future once those 127 and 134 volt wheels start to release and which 
side of the EUC spectrum do you fall? Are you the die-hard traditionalist who rather see no changes made to the Sherman? Or are you already on the 134 volt suspension bandwagon? Well, that is what the comment section below is for. And you know what? Aha! I somehow managed to trick you into once again wasting another 15 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community. So tell your friend, teach them how to ride, and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you. Oh!